This came up in my feed. This is essentially Canada bigging themselves up over their participation in what essentially is going to be the next moon landing charade. So have a little listen. We are all living together on this one tiny marble in space. Hate to break it to you, mate. We're not living on a marble in a vacuum. That is impossible. We want to thrive and survive here in the future. We must learn to come together, to collaborate, to take on the biggest challenges that face humanity. Well, how about rather than looking away from the earth and fantasizing and spending billions and billions and billions of pounds, dollars, whatever, on essentially firework displays and pantomime performances, why don't we use that money and come together and actually look after the people here on earth rather than fantasizing about places that no one's ever been to. I just wanted to share this incredible perspective behind me. Um, in the Canadian Embassy with the background of the Capitol building. And for me, it's inspirational because it reminds me of the collaboration that we have together as two countries. As part of a larger collaboration to take humanity back to the moon with our international partners and eventually onto Mars. As most of the viewers will know, uh, regular viewers of this channel will know, the moon landing, the original moon landing, is probably one of the most embarrassing space propaganda stories out there. Even Buzz Aldrin now is ridding, him, ridding himself of the darkness of his participation in that silly charade. As an older guy, he's quite often now, uh, well, I can think of at least four different times Buzz has stated they didn't go to the moon. Sometimes a little bit cryptic in a slight cryptic fashion, but he's basically spelled it out for anyone with the slightest bit of common sense. No one's been to the moon. If you haven't got a bias regarding the moon landing, the Earth, space, you'll know that. We set big goals and we come together to work on them as a team to create innovative solutions for those problems. Oh, there they are in their boiler suits and a space prop. You know, let's pretend to be really interested in this recycled Tosh, which essentially is another mock-up of the original 1969 moon landing charade technology. I thought you lost that tech, but there it is. And you're in your boiler suits giving it large. I reflect on often the amazing opportunity our crew will have as we leave Earth in the Orion capsule and fly out towards the moon. We're going to see the Earth get small in the window and eventually we're going to get far. Now this is a great shot here because this, I'll leave a link in the description to the original Artemis 1 mission which absolutely got spanked, served up for the tosh that it is, where essentially this shot got exposed as being a cut and paste charade. Bear with me. So we come to the infamous shot, and essentially it's a cut and paste pantomime where the globe and the spacecraft have been pasted in to a black background. You can see that by adjusting the contrast. Link in the description to this video if you haven't already seen it. I'll put a link in the description to the moon landing. My thoughts on the original moon landing, if you haven't seen that as well. But it's already been exposed. This newer moon landing, yet alone the old one. Just silly. Back to this ridiculous video. In the window, and eventually we're going to get far enough away to see the entire blue marble of Earth hanging in the vacuum of space. Hanging in the vacuum of space. <laughs> well, we've already exposed it. It was a cut and paste pantomime. Now, how would your blue marble hang in the vacuum of space? It wouldn't, would it? And how does your blue marble separate an air pressure system from the vacuum of space without solid separation? It can't, can it? If you're going to say gravity, I'm sorry. It's not man enough to do the job because it can be overcome by a gentle breeze. Fact. So that's you done for. 
Never mind demonstrable reality, which we can all test and verify for ourselves, which tells us this is retarded. That overview effect, as we often term it, will have an enormous impact on all of us. And I know that will be a profound and beautiful... How, how will it affect me, mate? It won't, will it? How will it affect people who are living in the street homeless? It won't, will it? In fact, it will hinder them and many generations to come because you're pushing the globe lie and space. This isn't my opinion at this point in time. This is a demonstrable, obvious fact. Experience for myself. Yes, we're not doing a good enough job here. They're not buying it. Let's put some music and another silly shot on. Let's hope they take the bait. We'll fly out, we'll see the moon get big in the window. But then even as we are examining the moon, as we come around the far side, the thing that will grab all of our attention is that earth rise. The earth rising up over the edge of the moon. Ridiculous. Now the earth just rose above the edge of the moon. Yet we can't see any of the moon lit up. Yet most of the earth looks lit up facing us. So would that mean the sun's behind us and behind the moon? Which means this side of the moon would be lit up rather than obstruct being in total darkness. Let's just come back again. Yeah. The dark moon is obstructing the scientifically impossible pasted in globe earth. And I think they've got the lighting slightly wrong there as well. Oh, what a surprise. Up over the edge of the moon. It will be a reminder that we are all living together on this one tiny marble in space. May, you actually may believe that. Obviously, when you realise you ain't going to the moon, you won't, you'll realise that. But at this point in time, you might actually believe that, Tosh. Because it works in favour to keep people in the loop, well, out of the loop until the last minute to play their role, to give a more genuine performance. Because you genuinely actually believe it. But that's silly. No matter how many images you show, how much music you play, how passionate you get, how many firework displays you show me, it doesn't matter. It's never going to change the fact the globe's scientifically impossible based on science we can test and verify for ourselves. Large standing bodies of water destroy the globe. Air pressure systems residing next to a vacuum without solid separation destroy the globe. Can't do it. It's impossible. And tower cranes and pendulums, guess what? They destroy the globe as well. Because they can't be dead still and plumb whilst doing ludicrous speeds in all sorts of different directions at the same time. It is what it is. Put aside your bias. Stop letting your biases stretch you in all directions. It's quite nice to actually let go of that silliness. And just to go, oh well. It ain't a ball. That's clearly ridiculous. I'm not going to get upset about it. I'm going to be empowered by it. This is a quite an exciting time. I'll put by my space fantasies and I'll address the games at play here. If we want to thrive and survive here in the future, we must learn to come together, to collaborate, to take on the biggest challenges that face humanity. Listen to this clown. He wants you to buy into his space narrative of coming together to face the biggest challenges for humanity. Yet you can't even look after people in your own cities. People are starving and dying in the streets. Governments are betraying the people. Mate, what are you talking about? Trying to sell us this, Tosh, when it's blatantly obvious. The pressing matters are here, right now. Not in some imaginary place, in the imaginary future of your imaginary space world. Ridiculous. I'm often speaking with youth today, and I, I recognize more and more often... So you're trying to brainwash the youth now into believing this tosh to plant the seeds of absurdity for the future generations. Because you know people have woken up to this silliness. 
you can't prove the globe because it's absurd. So you, what you've had to do is go through the roof with propaganda, trying to privatise this place called space. When you look behind the scenes at the privatisation of so-called space, these companies, you always see American governments behind the scenes funding the companies that are supposedly private companies. Yeah? Just another charade. These kids should be asking questions about why is the globe scientifically impossible? Why is the evidence that's being cited for the globe? Why does that basically a majority of that involve me looking away from Earth, not doing science here on Earth? Why is science rammed down them? Why is a globe in the classroom? If it was so true, you wouldn't need it everywhere at the start of programs in your classroom. It would be obvious. But it's not. The obvious thing is it's impossible, which is why they have to ram it down you, yeah? which is why they rely on naive, gullible individuals who are brainwashed into delusion, into gaslighting people back into this silliness. A few people have done it. Some genuinely were gaslit back to a globe earth theory. Others were at it from day one. But the point is, no one's ever going to gaslight me back to something that's scientifically impossible. doesn't matter if I'm going against the grain and the heavy numbers go against me. If I stand by things that can be tested and verified by all, what have I got to fear? Nothing. All I'm going to do is take great strength in highlighting the fact what others believe in is absurd. That they are thinking about the challenges of their future and it worries them. Rightly so, corrupt governments collaborating in this charade. The problems in society right now, wars going on, homeless people, drug addictions, the list goes on and on. But these people say it's going to be all right. If you keep giving them millions and millions to go to this imaginary place where they justify it with firework displays and space pantomime, it'll be all right. It's a joke. If these people really had our best interests at heart, it wouldn't be homeless people. We wouldn't have wars going on at the moment. They, the media wouldn't play religious people off against each other, football teams against each off against each other, and everyone else off against each other. Come on. This is a fucking insult and a joke. I have this great faith in humanity that we can overcome these challenges. The hardest part is not the technology or the innovation. The hardest part is getting... The hardest part is getting people to realise that people like yourself are part of the problem. Space is the problem. The globe is the problem. No amount of music is ever going to sway the fact that the globe's impossible. Fact. Is this on air? Artemis Pyramid. Have a word, mate. ...everyone to work together, but we know it is possible. We have examples like the International Space Station, an extraordinary... Yes, we've shown special effects and, and layered stuff of places that are impossible, so it must be real. ...invisible example of how humanity can do hard things together. As we go forward Cartoons. to the moon and onto Mars, we will continue to set that example. Cartoons, music, stories... And to provide the inspiration for our youth. Cartoons, more stories, brainwashing the youth into believing absurd things, forgetting the fact that the problem lies right here, right now. The government is the problem. They shouldn't be teaching our kids any of this horse shit. To lean in to the big problems, to work together and to know that everyone on this planet is of equal value and equal importance. Then why have we got so many homeless people in the street, mate? Why are people suffering with drug addictions? Why is there so much war going on? Why is the media toxic? Why is the education system teaching our kids that reality is exactly the opposite from what tested and verified by all? Absolutely disgusting bit of propaganda from the Can uh, Canadian Space Agency. Disgusting. If you're a globe believer at this point in time, you should be ashamed of yourself. The people who represent your fantasy world online 
lie constantly, misrepresent constantly, all for cash, financial gains and tickles of their ego. And they're actually pushing human suffering as a result. And if you're defending that without any practical references or any science, which we know you haven't got, all you can do is lie and misrepresent and try and straw man me and attach things to me that aren't my claims. If that's all you got and you still support these people, shame on you.